grace of God, I'm safe. It was last two months when I went home for my husband, senior brother, barrier. So, in that barrier, I feel something sharp pain in my heart. That thing carried like something like chuku chuku that strand. Started walking on my heart. Walking my, on my heart. I said, ah, maybe it is the corn that I eat too. It has been long before I eat corn. I say, well, I didn't call anything. I didn't even think anything about sickness. Ah, but when I come back to Bonnie here, I started feeling that thing. That thing started break me down. Break me down. Up to my husband, I used to run back from working place. I come and look me. When you come and meet me, lie down. I say, ah, woman, this thing is disturbing you. I say, it's disturbing me now. It's breaking you down. I say, mm, not sure you have to say, sure. I say, yes, now. He went to chemist. You go and chat and medicine. They say, uh, I explained to doc, uh, uh, them, they say it's uh, typhoid and malaria. I went to this chemist. They say it's a uh, worm. I'll go to this one. They will say it's this. I, I run around everywhere. Tablet, full house. I take for where it's getting worse. So one day, and I went to one nurse again. I explained to her. She said, hmm. Say, Mom, uh, mommy, this is not ordinary. So you follow me to Ogoni. When we go to Ogoni, then you, they, will, they will solve the problem. For you. Just look for money. I say Ogoni, she say, I say, ha. Ah. This one Ogoni, say, I say, ah. I have a, I have a father that can save me for this problem. He say, ha, ah, mommy. I say, don't worry yourself. Since is this Ogoni, I realize myself, no worry. So on Wednesday, I come to the prayer. I pray. After prayer, I run to the geo. I explain to him. He said, have you gone to hospital? I said, hmm. I've went everywhere. Oh. He said, okay, let us pray. He prayed with me. After that prayer, I just come out. When I reach the end of that place, I have a big voice in my heart. Brr. I said, huh, what do I eat now? I don't eat anything. I just veg, heavy veg. I know that the Lord is doing something. I went to the second week. I come back again. I go and meet I went to go and meet the Jew again. He said, how is your body now? I said, it's getting better. I said, he will go final. Because anything that the Lord has started, he must surely end it. Whatever God did not plant in that place, that enemy has planned, he must be uprooted. So don't worry. I said, okay. He prayed with me again. The third week again, he prayed with me again. My people, up to today, that thing disappeared, disappeared forever. I don't feel anything again. It gone forever. I said, thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Rock of Faith. If you want to clap, you can clap oh, better than thank that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. As the Lord have done for our sister, He will do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. The second testifier, Helen Jumbo, should come and give her testimony. Helen Jumbo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, if I sink, they will say I should stop. That is why I didn't want to sink. But praise God. Praise them again. Praise them again. What God did for me Money wouldn't have been able to do it. I am Sister Helen Jumbo by the grace of God. I'm born again. I want to thank God who delivered my last born from evil mark, evil identification mark. When I came back last month, after about two weeks or so, I looked on his face. I saw something down his jaw. I look at him. I look at the thing very well. The thing is spreading big. I said, this thing is not on your mark, on your face before. And this thing is evil mark. 
and I am going to pray for you. The thing, dark, black. He said, Che, mom, say. This one, when I pray, I said, I pray. Because he did not understand. Brethren, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Me, I didn't know what the devil was planning. But as I saw it, I said, This thing is not ordinary. He's Marco, but big here. And in the night, Tuesday night, I spent time, I prayed. He slept with me, I prayed, and I was looking at the thing, glittering black. Down here, another one glittering black. I say, it don't happen, but you will not be there. Because my father said, whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted, will be rooted up. I don't know how you came, but you will not be there. Bread drain. On Wednesday, we came here for this solution hour. I'm not exaggerating. It's not here you would have seen it all. But at three people witnessed it. Three. Three persons witnessed it. One of our pastors, Joseph. Do you know that God took care? After that prayers that day, I am telling you, the mark disappeared. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Shall we rise up on our feet? Let's rise up on our feet and give thanks to the Lord who have done this for our sisters and their family. As you thank God for what the Lord have done for them this morning, God will in return do wonders in your life and your family. Let's thank God for the one that he has done. And he's going to do more as we enter the new week. As you leave this place, believe God for your own miracle. Believe God that you come next. Next Wednesday, you too have a testimony. Whatever is your desire, whatever is your need, whatever is your problem, thank God for the one that you have done. And it's going to answer your prayer. I want to everybody praying right now. Jesus' name we pray. Then see my soul, my Savior God to thee. Oh, great. Oh. Sing my soul, my sin will go to So mercy for the great things he has done for us. We appreciate his goodness. Oh, great. Oh. Oh, great. Dancing my soul. We are God to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Listen, Father, we thank you for what you have done. I'm telling you, God is faithful, God is merciful. God is powerful. God is glorious. Thank him for his mercies. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for our brethren, for all that you have done for us. We know you will do more for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. 
And let the church say better. Amen. Amen. So uh, as we keep on standing, we're going to sing from hymn number 167. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear this body in alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. We are going to listen to the organist.
tell you all of my challenges I'll bring it to the master I may not shout but I'll bring it before the master this is the challenge the Lord grace to believe that you care for me grace to trust in your caring ability grace to trust you in your loving ability that you love us so much and that if the father freely gave out his son is able to give us everything that pert pertains to life and godliness. Although that do not believe anymore in your power, Lord, all those that pray but no faith to believe, Lord, do something in their hearts. All those that are discouraged, almost backsliding, do come in to pray, do come into church. But they are almost dropping their faith. Go do something in their hearts. Those that just come here without experiencing their, your glory, your power, they just come here as a routine. Go do something in their life this morning. Let there be difference. When the disciples encountered your glory in the Mount of Transfiguration, their life changed. The word of God says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. Let not our coming here today be in vain. Let it not be routine. Let it be extraordinary. Let your transforming power bring change in our lives. We we'll do something great in our lives. Give us faith to believe that you can do the impossible, that you can do beyond the things we ask. Every deep rooted unbelief. For the Bible says, Let not the man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. This morning, we root them out. Every deep, deep rooted discouragement, whether they are here, whether they are in their workplace at home, let your power touch them this morning. We stand and we represent the region. And we represent the kingdom. I pray that Lord, your power will touch every soul here in this kingdom, in this region. Let every soul be touched. We invite your presence. We invite your power. Let today be a different, a different day in our lives. All the voice of unbelief and all the voice are you sure something is going to happen lord this morning we chase them out
in jesus name we pray great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all that i need that i and as great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me just one more time great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness who oh, yes morning by morning new mercies i see all that i need that thy hand has provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto Lord, we bow before your glory. We bow before your throne. We invite your mighty presence. We invite your glory. And Jacob said, I knew not that God is here. Lord, I pray that your glory will be mighty in our presence this morning. And it will not be the usual meeting. And we pray for all those that are engulfed with the spirit of death and the fear of death this morning we cancel them we cast them out in the name of jesus christ we reject the spirit of death in this region we cast them out in the name of jesus christ all those that are sick whatever they are the hospital we cancel them every coming sickness the ones that we have not seen now we cancel them we are praying for our children you keep them alive lord kidnappers will not see them whether they travel you will preserve them in the university you will preserve them wherever they go you will preserve them you will preserve our husbands you will preserve our wives you will preserve our children you will preserve our members in the name of jesus christ the bible says whatsoever we shall bind your edge shall be bound in heaven we bind every activity of the devil against the church against this region we bind you and we cast you out in the name of jesus bless us O lord in jesus name we pray Amen. okay this morning i want to briefly pray with you i talk to you on the topic praying down god's glory pray down God's glory and um, I don't have much time but the few time we have we are going to it's going to be useful Genesis chapter 32 Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 24 and the Bible says that and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day breaked and he said I will not let thee go except that bless me and he said unto him what is thy name and and he said jacob and he said thy name shall be called no more jacob but israel for as a prince hast thou power with god and with men and has prevailed i pray you prevail today you see something as jacob was praying the man tried to touch him Jacob refused here some people lose their blessing as 
they begin to pray maybe be their prayer sleep comes they give him to sleep and they lose the glory they lose the answer but jacob refused to give in even here as we pray distraction comes you allow distraction to come sin to come in to capture you you will lose the glory you will lose the glory all those that want to enjoy god's glory are the people that will refuse distraction when praying a brother told me some years ago he had no job things difficult things very hard a graduate in fact he told me that the wife used to go to the in-laws place to the brother to go and beg food very tight and they began to seek the face of the lord and they began to pray say lord i want my situation to change began to fast fast break it six o'clock pray kept on praying and he said one morning he just woke up and something told him pray and that most times that is when the devil will say sleep and he began to pray he prayed until about 5 a.m something says relax something told him continue thank god he didn't give in to that voice to say, go and sleep or go and rest and so i said kept on praying he told me he saw chains in his hands and they were broken and they fell off after the time as i speak he has bought cars he has built houses the yoke was broken not by his certificates but he prayed until the glory came down he prayed till the glory came down not by his certificate but the glory yes a believer but bounds financially bounds handicap but he prayed he was left alone you want to change your destiny you will pray i know many years ago when this one i've not even been built i'll come to the church and pray alone i spend midnight praying here seeking the face of god and then immediately god will just let me see your marriage young pray pray and get your break secure your breakthrough for the future before the future comes you are there bring down god's glory in your life in your family in your home you pray until you know some time ago my uncle came to my house he came in he said there is power in this house there is power he was just saying alone an unbeliever he said there is power you pray down the god's glory in your life in your home the devil cannot operate bring down god's glory that's what we're talking about not just praying here alone developing a praying lifestyle that's why briefly i'm going to run through my points you follow me as much as possible <laughs> number one is practicing prevailing prayer that's point one point two praying and post and the pursuit for peace Point three, prayer with penitence. I want to tell you, you see, why many people pray and their prayers are not answered. Prayer with penitence. If you don't have a broken spirit, God cannot answer your prayer. Prayer with penitence. I have so many points here. Prayer and the possession of purity. You pray, you sin, you pray, you sin. 
your sin cancels your prayer prayer with purity the possession of purity and then we talk we talk about praying passionately many people pray casually they don't pray passionately and that's why their prayers are not answered they don't pray passionately and then we'll talk about praying with the promises of God. How can you pray without using the promise to remind God of his word? Can you just pray? Just pray, 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 pray. Where is the promise? Bring it before the table. Tell the Lord, this is what you said. And as soon as you tell him, you remind him of his promises, he has no reason to deny you. Come. God is not difficult the way we think. It's not difficult. Christianity is one of the best things to, to experience. Some people think that you have to pray until God answers your prayer. You have to pray and pray and pray. Yes, you have to pray. But that is not the way God operates. There are things that makes people to pray unnecessarily long. And because they don't have some ingredients in their prayer, these ingredients are lacking. Praying with God's promises, that's one of the ingredients. Another ingredient is praying and preaching. If you don't, if you only pray and you're not a soul winner, you'll be hindering your prayer. One of the things that quickens answers to prayer, fastings answers to prayer, is soul winning. It's preaching the gospel. Another ingredient that makes God to answer your prayer is prayer and praise. You know, some people don't know how to praise God. Just pray, pray, pray. God, give me a car. God, give me my, my God. What about the other things he has done? Prayer with praise. And the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas, they began to pray and they began to sing, and something happened. And so another ingredient lacking in the life of believers some believers is praise their prayer is not made their prayer is made up of complaints prayer and praise i tell you even when you praise human being human being will be excited to do something for you when you praise your children your children will be excited to work more for you <laughs> praise the lord Praise. It has power. It attracts answers. Prayer. The ingredient that makes prayer to be answered is praying with positive persuasion. And the Bible says <laughs> Abraham was fully persuaded. Positive. As you are praying, you know that God will answer. You don't have any double mind. Praise the Lord. No double mind. You know that this prayer, you know, is as simple as this. One of, one of my pastors came and met me in Kilel, a workers' meeting. He says, Sir, <laughs> as simple as this, I'm looking for my ID card. I've been looking for my ID card. I can't find it. <sighs> you know, ID card, you are coming to tell pastor for ID card. See, he cannot find it. So, what do we do now? <laughs> so, pray. I said, okay, let us pray. In Jesus' name, we prayed. Amen. He went home. That day, he saw it. The ID card he had been looking for. The Spirit of God. Something with us. You pray and you, you don't have double minds. Leave that one to God. Don't begin to think, how will God do it? Are you sure God will do it? Just leave that one with God. Prayer with persuasion. That as I pray, I know something will happen. And you go your own. You don't need to begin to monitor it. Prayer with persuasion. That's another ingredient that makes prayer to be answered. 
And then prayer with positive confession, positive proclamation. Whatever you believe, say it out. Praise the Lord. Amen. It works. Okay? The other, my daughter in the university now, she wrote the first exam. The mathematics was not there. That is, they didn't even put it there. She wrote the second exam. She failed mathematics. <laughs> it's not your result. She wrote the third one. I told her, you will not fail. I said, you? I woke up from one of, one of the sleep. I, as I woke up, I told her, you have made it already. You will not fail. We will just be in the house. I used to do funny things. I say, I, I've seen you. You are carrying your bag and you are, in the, you are going to university. That is what I practice. I say, you are going. We have not seen the result. Oh. I say, you are going. I've seen you. And when the result came out, she cleared everything. You must, you must be an addicted, positive, confession person. Addicted. Yeah? Something just flashed into your mind. <laughs> what if, if your child dies now? Tell that voice is a lie. My child will not die. Once you believe that, it will come to pass. Oh, you have a dream. And uh, they showed you your wife or said that as you wake up, say it it cannot be. It cannot. And it will not because you have the final say. God will be looking at you. Once you accept it, it comes to pass. The demons doesn't have all the power. Jesus Christ says, all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. And that the same Jesus says, I give unto you power. So one thing that is lacking in the ingredients of prayer is positive confession. Always, all the time. All the time you are you are programmed to be positive. You are programmed to be positive. Very positive. And once you begin to operate like that, the devil has no option but to give you road. God has no option but to answer your prayers because the Bible says let the double minded man not think he shall receive anything do you understand the meaning of that from the Lord so another ingredient that is necessary in prayer is praying persistently you pray it has not happened you keep on praying you keep on praying you keep on you will not give up you will not say oh i'm tired i don't think god will answer that prayer and you abandon it persistent prayer you will not give up i know that my redeemer live it you will not give up and then another ingredient that is necessary is patience. Prayer with patience. You are still serving the Lord. You are not backing out. You are not slowing down your Christian service to the Lord. Prayer with patience. I'm going to say this one. I need to explain this one. Prayer with practicing God's principles. You see the problem of the Christianity in Nigeria is this. They believe in grace. They don't believe in godliness. Now, but it is grace that provides godliness. They believe in Christ but they don't want to believe in his commandments. They want to just gain everything from Christ, but they don't want to be subject to his commandments. So, people always pray, but they don't want to be subject to the commandments. 
And that's why a lot of people pray and their prayers are not heard because they are not carrying out the principles that is attached. For example, when thou standest to pray, forgive. Am I correct? Somebody is offending you. you not, say, forgive that person. I, I give you an example. The GS shared with us many years ago. Shared with us many years ago. He said, one man of God, great man of God, he found out from another mystery, went into 40 days and 49 fasting and prayer. After that, he started having demonic attack. So he came to the general superintendent as a senior. There are two, there are generals with there, but as, as a senior person, came to him. This is what I'm experiencing. And the GS said, he looked at him and said, Straight, do you have a problem with your wife? He said, No. The GS said, Okay, go and call your wife for me. So both of them came together. And the GS said, Ask the wife, uh, Your husband, does he have any problem with you? The woman said, yes. I told him, let's say to before he goes into this fasting and prayer. He refused. Now, you cannot bribe God with fasting and prayer. If you have not done the other one, it will not work. The principle that Christ has kept. Matthew chapter 5, the principle is there. Matthew chapter 6 is there. Matthew chapter 7 is there. The principles you must obey the principles and that's why Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says if thou shall diligently not casually diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do all that he command thee then he says he will make you to be what? above you will diligently but you, you see the Christianity of these days grace without godliness Christ without obeying his command they claim Christ they don't claim his commandment so the principle quickly let's go to one practicing prevailing prayer you need to practice it you may not pray five hours but you need to practice prayer not only in the church in your home you need to practice prayer and how do we practice prayer in different ways of course in the bedroom you can pray your prayer should not the bible says pray without what season that's my scriptures first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 practice prayer when you want to go out, Lord, go with me. As you come back, Lord, I'm back. As you want to sleep, as you are traveling in the boat, now, not that all those kind of prayers some people pray, the prayer of fear in the boat, Jesus, that's not the prayer I'm talking about. The prayer, your eyes are open, but your heart is burning. Your heart is charged. You practice prayer. In the workplace, you are praying. Pray without ceasing. Practice prayer. Not only once. Don't make it, it must be like this. And that's why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And there are times the Holy Spirit will want you to pray. If you obey that voice, you will solve problem. Pray without ceasing. Practice prayer. Practice prayer. Practice it. Not only in the church. Practice prayer. You are confused. Pray. <laughs> you are having misunderstanding with your wife, with your husband. You are trying to solve it. No way. Pray. Go, go to the Lord in prayer. See, God answers prayer if we believe Him. Prayer with penitence. Let's look at Psalm 51. Psalm 51.
prayer with penitence if you lack this in your prayer God will not answer your prayers look at it verse 17 the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit a broken and a contract heart oh God thou will not despise if you have a hardened heart God cannot deal with you God cannot answer your prayer a broken spirit your heart is broken you are the man that can easily repent that's why God said that David was a man after his own heart even if he, if he does evil and a minister comes to tell him immediately his heart will be broken he will say I'm sorry but when your heart is hardened God cannot answer your prayers so you see this kind of heart you see, God cannot despise their prayer God cannot reject their prayers a broken heart on your own you can read 2 Chronicles chapter 34 verse 27 praying and the pursuit for peace Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 the ingredients that will make your prayer has to be answered if these ingredients are lacking pray from now till next year your prayers will not be answered Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 to 25 Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 to 25 therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and thou rememberest that thy brother out, out against thee leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way first and be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gifts if your wife is angry with you and you are praying here and you have not settled with your wife pray and speak in tongues God will not answer the prayer you are oppressing your wife in fact this morning you, are, you even squeeze your wife's mouth because she abused you you squeeze the mouth and then you are, you are, you are praying you have not settled with your wife your husband God will not answer the prayer he will not your neighbors you cannot greet them you don't greet your neighbors deeper life brother, deeper life sister your neighbors around you you don't if you like let the Jesus pray for you he cannot change his word you will first of all go and do this one then God will answer the prayer so you see the things that hinders prayers that a lot of people despise If you read first Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 11, I wish I had my time. You see the important. He said, pursue peace. Say, pursue it. God said, pursue peace. Some people take it for granted. Your workers, your co-workers, you are not at good terms. What are you? What are you saying? And you say you're a child of God. Pursue peace. Another one is praying and the possession of purity. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says, Blessed are who? Are the pure in who? In heart. For they shall do what? You know the meaning of that is not only see God in heaven. When you pray, you do what? when you pray you do what you will see God he will answer the prayer when you pray you pray for guidance he will see him he will show forth himself but when you don't have a pure heart you are angry against this one you are angry against this one you are bitter against this one there is loss there there is pride there God cannot answer the prayers. You cannot see God. The person will see demons. 
he will see unanswered prayers he will see long standing problems because the heart is not pure we say that man is blessed that keeps his heart pure he says he will see God <laughs> praise the Lord I say praise the Lord what do I mean by that I've shared it here before the day that armed robbers came to my house early in the morning they broke into my door they came with their knives their machetes and I jumped up at about 4 a.m. and I was looking at them I was wondering my wife was pregnant then she ran into the bedroom and I was looking at them and they wore uh, face masks and they were saying where is your phone in fact, before I would get to them, they have already carried my computer screen. They said, where is your phone? I was looking at them. I was trying to recollect myself from sleep and then wondering in my mind, I said, what could be these people that will come to my house? I was trying to look at them and all of a sudden, the power of the Holy Spirit came. I said, Jesus, the blood of Jesus, three times. I said, three times. God came. Till today, I can't tell the story, but God came. They threw the screen. I didn't, they threw away the screen. I ran with every speed. When I came outside, even their slippers, they couldn't wear their slippers. I didn't touch them. They left their bag. I'm telling you, what I can't explain, but when you are pure and you call God, God will come. I cannot explain to you today what happened. But I remember something just came all over me. See the blood of Jesus. Three times. They ran. I went outside. I saw their slippers. Their legs. They couldn't wait to wear. I'm telling you. And some time ago, I closed from work. And then I was living at Uku Avenue. I was going. And somebody blocked me. I was, I was surprised. I want to move that. He blocked me. I want to move that. He blocked me. I was provoked. I should be around 19, I mean 2007 or 2006, seven or so. I said, What? I want, he blocked me. I was provoked and I began to speak in tongues. And I began to speak in tongues. He left me. I walked away. After some days, he traced me to Abilabi, where I used to pastor. In one corner, traced me to the church. He came and knelt down. He said, Pastor, please pray for me. They came and warned me in the dream. When you need God, he will show for you. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And that's why the psalmist says, Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I shall fear no evil. Praying passionately. James chapter 5. James chapter 5 verse 17. Casual prayers don't do much. The devil is not afraid of casual prayers. Brethren, you need to pray. And you need to pray. And pray like Jacob. Even more than Jacob. The Bible says from the time of John the Baptist in now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence take at it by violence and the violence take at it by force. James chapter 5, verse 17. See, Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly, not casually. He prayed earnestly. Did you pray earnestly? Or you just pray casually. In Jesus' name. Amen. As you are praying, yeah. Mm, mosquito, you can kill mosquito and come back. Your neighbors are talking outside. You go and listen to them and come back. You had your name. <laughs> not, not this kind of prayer. If you want to change your destiny, change your life. You pray passionately. 
Bible says he prayed earnestly that God will shut the heavens and God answered the prayer. Then praying with God's promises. In John chapter 15, verse 7, John 15, 7. John 15, 7. 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If the word of God abides in you, and so as you are praying, you are praying according to the word. Hey, God has no option but to answer your prayers. You are not praying from your head. You are praying according to the word. You are bringing forth the word. You are challenging God with the word. This is your promise. You say you will give me the Holy Ghost. This is the word. This is the promise. And so you pray with the promise of God. Reminding God of his promises. Holding on to his promises. Then your life will change. I know my redeemer lived. You know there is this scripture I love. And it works for me. The surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. I love that scripture so much. And I remind God of that scripture almost every day. That surely, wherever I go, no matter how difficult that place is, surely, as I appear there, my case will be different. Surely, goodness and mercy. <laughs> Fortunately, my, my dialect name is mercy. It has to do with mercy. In fact, the meaning is, God have mercy on me. That's the meaning. Say anywhere I go. <laughs> and they say this thing will not do it again. When I go there, the mercy will speak for me. And I quote the scripture and I claim it. And I hold on to it and it's working. Every scripture has power to create itself. You don't need to help the scripture. But many of us, we do without the promise. Prayer and preaching. Now, let's look at it this way. Your son, your child, you love your child. Your child is good, behaves well. But your child doesn't like to go to message for you. You say, uh, go and wash plate. Your child will tell you that. I don't have time. Mommy, I'm reading. You know that I'm reading. Uh, go and bring this. Mommy, I'm reading. Will you be happy with that child? The child doesn't steal you. The child doesn't steal. The child doesn't fight. The child doesn't run outside. But the problem is that the child does not have time to do something for you. The, the, the child comes back with good result. But when you want to send that child something, he does not have time. Will you be happy? Uh, my church, answer me now. Eh? Will you be happy? That is what we do to God. We say we are born again. But go, go and preach now and bring somebody into the kingdom we don't have time so these are some things that hinders our prayers because you will not be happy with your children I'm going to round up soon so that we pray and enjoy God's power write down John chapter 15 verse 7 to 8 and then praying with the power of God it's very important that we pray with his power when we pray and that's why believers brethren we, we don't need to take the baptism of the Holy Spirit for granted so many believers are not doing well because they are not even interested in testing the dead, test, dead person in Trinity, the power, the glory, the one that is in charge of the church now, the one that is on the earth now, ruling, controlling, 
and you don't have anything to do with him how can you enjoy the fullness of God how can you and now the activities of demons they are increasing and then you want to fight the war with carnal methods for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God it is the Holy Ghost power mighty to pull him down a stronghold unfortunately many believers don't pray for the power of the Holy Ghost in their lives and so prayers that they will pray 10 minutes and get the answer they will pray like two years the man that is filled with the Holy Ghost you see you see let me give you an example we want to cut a big tree maybe you roko tree very big tree and then this one has machete this one have sewing machine and this one have bulldozer which one will bring it down first which one will bring it down first that's the thing that's the thing yes you will have the answer but it might take you longer time You'll be cutting with your knife. Mm. Mm. Why this man that has bulldozer? He just comes. Go, go, go. Push it. Put head. Push it like this. He falls. He goes. He will achieve more. Why do we neglect the power of the Holy Ghost? Why do we take the Holy Spirit for granted? Why do we do as if the Holy Spirit does not exist? Why do we not give the Holy Spirit his place? In our lives and in the church and you will see what god will do to the holy spirit why do we keep the holy spirit very far we pray god to give us understanding we need the holy spirit the holy spirit will give you inspiration the holy spirit will tell you see they are planning to kill your daughter now pray now the Holy Spirit will tell you, see, now, see that member, see what wants to happen. Pray now. The Holy Spirit, he will guide you. He will direct you. And, and, and when you are praying, oh, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to pray with his power. I got into a doctor's house, his office, to pay him his money. As I got in the air, the Spirit came. I told him, doctor, I want to pray for you. You say pray for me and i began to pray i went to pay him his money i took one of my members daughter there so we paid him some money and then the balance i took to go and pay him there I, he said pray for me and i began to pray because the holy spirit was there and i knew that the holy spirit wanted me to pray for him and i began to pray and all of a sudden now i was speaking in tongues and i was praying for him. and then i will now begin to speak in english speak in english as i finished the prayer i said all the things you are praying are what they just told me that they had a dream that this hospital closed down but you have come you are praying against it as if i knew and embrace me and i tell you for three years for three years he paid my daughter's school fees in private school three years why do we take the holy spirit for granted we are losing so many things let us rise up and pray. <laughs> we are losing so many things. So many things. Rise up and pray. We need to repent of that. Taking the Holy Spirit for granted. We need to repent in the church of that. Not giving the Holy Spirit his place. His place. He is the one in charge of the church now. He is the Holy Ghost. That God will change us. And these ingredients, we will apply them as we pray. And I tell you, if we apply them, our lives can never remain. The devil cannot stop us. Close your eyes and pray and say, Lord, I surrender my hearts to you. I surrender my hearts to you. I surrender my soul to you. I surrender my spirits to you. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender, I surrender my life. I surrender my life. I don't want to be an ordinary Christian. I don't want to be an ordinary Christian. A bench woman. I don't want to be a, a prayerless 
Christian change my Christian life they help me to apply these principles of the scripture not only praying there are things you must do these ingredients if you apply it to your prayer to your prayer life you can never remain the same the ingredients of praying always the ingredients of praying with a penitent heart the ingredient of pursuing peace pursuing peace in your marriage peace with your neighbors the ingredients of possessing purity the ingredients of passionate prayer Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much passionate prayer the ingredient of praying with his promises praying reminding God of his promise this is what you said that my child will not die this is what you said that none shall be barren in the land and you hold on to God and forget about your feeling forget about what you're saying what people are saying the ingredients of preaching the gospel prayer and preaching the ingredients of praying with the power of the Holy Spirit the ingredient of prayer with praises that God will help you the ingredient of prayer and positive confession open your mouth and pray Has God spoken to you? Make up your mind to act. Make up your mind to walk according to what God has spoken to you. The ingredient of faith, positive persuasion. Always persuaded, fully persuaded that what God has said, He will do it for me. And as I have prayed, God will answer the prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus' name we pray. God wants us to live for Him. If we live for Him, He will bless us. I'm telling you, if we live for Him, He says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all other things shall be added I want to pray first for those that want to live with God you want to begin to walk with God in a supernatural way in a special way you want to be committed unto God I want to pray for those before I pray generally can you raise up your hand you, you want to love God more you, you want to go deeper you know into a deeper relationship you, you, want, you want to draw near to God you are far now from God. You want to draw near to him. Can you just raise up your hand as we pray? Tell the Lord, I want to draw near to you. Whatever thing that is making me not to draw near to you, Lord, take it away. I surrender. Yes, it may not be pure sin. It may be talkativeness. It may be unbelief. Whatever thing. It may be spiritual laziness. Laziness to do spiritual things. But the blood of the Lamb will cleanse them. Will take them away. It may be unbelief. You are not able to believe God for big things, for great things. Believe Him, believe Him, trust Him, trust Him, trust Him, trust Him, trust Him, trust Him. The Lord, I surrender. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Come and take charge of my life. I want to serve you better. I want to begin to hear from you. I want to encounter your glory. I want to encounter your presence. Lord, I surrender. I surrender. That will, that thing I don't want to give up. I give it up now. That talkativeness. That talkative. I give it up. That laziness. I give it up. That thing. I, I surrender to you. And the Lord will forgive. He will touch you. But I will say, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Yes. Lord, we want to walk close. Close that with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, 
I pray. You said anyone that coming in unto you, you will in no wise cast out. And Lord, when you spoke to the believers in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and eat with me. Lord, I pray, as your people open their hands, hands and open their hearts to come close to you, Lord, accept them. Accept them. Accept us in the name of Jesus Christ. A better relationship, a holy relationship, a praying relationship, a life of faith, a life of faith, a life of positive confession. Lord, grant us in the name of Jesus Christ. All the spirit of dullness, all the spirit of unbelief, all the spirit of prayerlessness, we cut them off. We cut them off. We cut them off in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the answer to prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let's all raise our hands to heaven. Let's all raise our hands to heaven. Oh yes, Lord, we believe, we believe, we believe. Father, I believe, I believe. You answer such prayer, you will glorify your soul. Mighty God, I pray, like a mighty wind, sweep out poverty, sweep out poverty, sweep out poverty, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that every spirit of poverty in any home, in any limitation, poverty, struggling. Look at one project, struggling, struggling. You spirit of limitation, you spirit of poverty, I command you, get out in the name of Jesus Christ. And you said, you have the power, you are the one that raised up the poor out of the dust and make him to sit with princes. I command these people, begin to sit with princes, begin to rule over princes. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, you said in your word that the seed of the righteous are the mighty upon the earth. I command our children to be great. I command them to be great. I command them to be great in the name of Jesus Christ. Children, wherever you are, listen to the voice of the Lord. I command you, be great in the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritually be great. Academically be great. Financially be great. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we cancel death. We cancel affliction. All those bad dreams, all those nightmares by the blood. We cancel them in the name of Jesus Christ. In all the powers of darkness caging our mouths, caging us, we are not able to preach. I break those cages. I break those cages. I break those cages. I break those chains. Mouth be open. Mouth preach the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we command, I command favor from up, down, left, and right, from the four corners of the world. I command employment to locate your people. I command prosperity to locate your people. I command your favor to locate your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, surely, every day of our life, surely, goodness and mercy will follow us. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. We will not backslide. We will not be seven. Thank you for the answer to prayers. Bless our region of Asia. Bless the family. In Jesus' name I pray. And let the church say a better amen.